Good morning, Life Science. Uh, just wanted to say, uh, still miss you guys, and I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm looking forward to our Zoom meeting that we're going to be having tomorrow. Uh, that's Tuesday. I'm going to be posting this video today, Monday. And I uh, wanted to just give you guys a lot of notice as far as the uh, test review. So basically creating our study guide. Um, so I'm going to be posting this video today. You're going to have multiple days that you could watch it, rewatch it, pause it, rewind it back to whatever you guys got to do, write down all your info. Um, so there you go. Let's jump right into it. Study guide, test prep for chapter 12, uh, invertebrates. All right. So first question that I have for you guys here is which phylum has the most animal species? And I'll give you a couple seconds. If you could answer it right now, that'd be great. If not, you can pause the video in between questions to see how well you do. And the answer we're looking for here is arthropoda. Um, you remember, arthropods covers a ton of different classes. And so arthropoda is a phylum. And all these classes that it includes, that would be like insects. Um, it's going to be crustaceans. Um, chilopods, so that's going to be like your centipedes, uh, it's going to be your diplopods, that's going to be like your millipedes, and it's going to be your arachnids, so that's your spiders, ticks, um, all the nasty stuff like that. All right, so there's question number one. Um, all right, let's see, give you another question here. Um, okay, this is specific to animals it's a little bit generic so i would phrase it something like animals are and then dot 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 and you guys would need to fill in how many possible correct answers so we'd be looking for things like um, they're eukaryotic so animals are eukaryotes um, they're consumers all animals must consume other organisms to gain fuel and nourishment um, and then reproduce sexually. So that would be another category that uh, goes directly with animals. Okay, um, how about this one? Some insecticides work by clogging the insect's spiracles. So insects cannot breathe. Essentially, that would be saying that an insecticide, if it were sprayed out and just kind of misted over, any of those tiny drops getting on the insect eventually will essentially acts like a clogging agent, almost like an adhesive, like a glue, and it's going to just cover up those spiracles. And you remember, that's one of the ways that insects can essentially breathe through their own um, outer tissue. So that would be a true statement. That is true. Uh, another one there. Insects have three pairs of legs. That's a key word, pairs. Not insects have three legs. Insects have three pairs, which would be a total of six legs. That's also true. Um, another big part here, you're going to want to write down all of these different terms. Okay, all of these terms here, I'm going to have a specific matching part that I'm going to put on the test. All these terms are going to be related. So, um, or not related, but you're going to have to match them up with like what animal is going to go with Analita. There's one. What is going to go with Arthropoda? There's the second one. What's going to go with Nidarians? That's a third one. What's going to go with Mollusca or Mollusks? That's another one. What's going to go with a Periphera? Think pores. Remember that. That's another one. What's going to go with Nematotata? That's another one. And what's going to go with Platy? Helminthes. That's the last one. Big term there. All right. Um, another key thing you're going to want to understand here. I'm going to give you three pictures. All right. So three pictures that I'm going to throw at you on this test. One's going to be a snail. One's going to be a fly. And one is going to be a starfish. Okay. So I'm giving you the heads up. There's just the generic pictures, not like you're looking at the insides, just looking at the snail, the fly, the starfish. And then I'm going to ask you probably four to five questions that relate directly to one of those or could potentially be multiple organisms. 
All right, in other words, you may have a question that only relates to one of those organisms, but you may have another question that relates to multiple um, of those organisms. All right, and uh, all right, how about this? Let's review a little thing about the simple brains. So a collection of nerves or a ball of nerves, what's that called? Review would be ganglions, okay? Another one specific to earthworms. We've also talked about it in relation to birds, even though we haven't talked about birds officially yet. Um, this is the chamber in an earthworm's digestive system that grinds up the food. Mechanical digestion is what's occurring here. For us, it's our teeth. We can bite and chew, but worms don't have that ability. So the answer there would be the gizzard. Okay. So the gizzard is what's doing the grinding and the mechanical digestion. And remember, there's a part that also stores it. So in other words, they may eat and eat and eat, and then they eat a little bit more, but it doesn't actually pass all the way through. They store it up. You remember that's happening in the crop, okay? All right, uh, a couple more that I'll throw at you here. This is uh, a question based upon earthworms still. So what structure controls blood pressure in an earthworm? Essentially, you're trying to think of what is the heart of the earthworm called? Because they don't define it technically as heart. It's called the aortic arches. All right, so the aortic arches, if you look back in your textbook, you'll see a little picture. Um, it's like this really small part, kind of in the closer to the, the head region of the earthworm. And there's these little arches like this right here, going down a small segment of the earthworm and right there, that's essentially acting as their heart. It's passing from there into veins and arteries. Um, and remember, they have a closed circulatory system uh, where the simplistic type of worms, more thinking of round worms, you know, they have an open circulatory system where things are just sloshing around. Okay. Um, and then one of the last ones you guys should remember, we talked about sponges right at the beginning of this chapter. What is the most important or key characteristic of a sponge? They all have, and we'd be looking for pores. Remember, they are periphera. So that's what goes back into saying they have pores. Or they're pore bearing. Okay? All right. So I'll leave it at that. Um, you guys remember, you're going to be steady, steady, steady. Test is later this week. You're going to be working on some key terms, some review questions. You'll find that all in Google Classroom. And uh, I hope you guys are doing good. All right, miss you. It's uh, still not the same without you. So stay safe. Hope you're doing good.